Hi everyone, Tit from the Dumpy Dialect. Well, sadly I've had to cut this first session short of the Dumbbell Nebula. Um, I just thought I'd see what I could get with um, just 90 second subs with the Rasa. Um, I'll just hold it. So I'll just see what it does, see what it comes out like. Um, the auto stretch with Nina was looking pretty good. But I've had clouds, I've had haze, and I've had to be keep running downstairs, moving, shifting the dome, because it's been shooting across the sky pretty quick, this target. So some targets I can leave it a good half hour to an hour before I have to move the dome, but this one has been sort of every 15, 20 minutes. So I'm just sort of getting up, shift the dome, get up, shift the dome. <laughs> so it's not a fully automated observatory, I'm afraid. I don't think it ever will be. But um, I'm happy with it. it. It does everything I want, so it just means I have to stay up. Like I say, there's, there's no way I'll have it, it'll ever be fully automated. But um, I'm happy as it is. At least if I stay up on I'm, I'm there, I'm hands on, I can fix something or stop something before something breaks. So, you know what I mean, I'll, fully automation, yeah, all right, I'll get it. I'm, I like the idea of it, but yeah, I just like to. I just like to be, I guess I'm just like being in control of the kit, so. But anyway, I thought while I was here, actually, I'll just have a run through my kit. Um, this is my main imaging rig, this is all I use. Um, I do have an ED80 Evo style, which I have imaged with, which I did image with over the winter, whilst the RAS was out of action. Um, but, um, now it's back, this is this is it, this is my main, what I use for imaging. I just love the, I just love imaging F 2.2, I mean it's, it's fast, it's, it's, you can just pull in so much data in so little day, a little, little time, it's, it's really good. Um, it has been a nightmare, it has tested my patience, but to be fair, it was salvaged from a water damage observatory anyway, from a storm damage observatory even, the roof. The owner was away, and the roof was ripped off. And he was actually he was actually looking at his phone on the camera in the observatory. And he had absolutely nothing he could do. The poor guy, and it was just the scope itself. I mean, if you heard of light buckets, this literally was a bucket. This filled it with water. Um, so it it survived pretty well, in all in all fairness. I did changed the cooling fan in the back because I thought well, that's a bit noisy. I thought the bearings had got it. Got another celestial, just as noisy. So I thought, oh, well, at least I've got a spare, I guess. Um, but other than that, it's got a few things in the tube. But I am thinking of flocking the tube inside at some point because I've already had it apart once now when I've had all the problems with the focuser. So and I still need to sort the autofocus out so for some reason. I can't. When I'm shooting broadband, works fine. When I shoot with the filter, the offset so much, it's, it won't work, and I'm, I, I don't get it. So um, maybe I've set something up wrong inside or something, I don't know, so I need to, I need to look into that. But that'll be, that's another story. For now, I can still manual focus it and use it, so I'm happy. Um, so anyway, um, I put the, put the rasp on dial as well, I removed the top dovetail simply because it's a lot of weight in that I haven't actually I haven't got any scales to weigh it but there's quite a bit of weight in one of these bars and this mount's only rated for is it 20 kilos and that's visual so and the scope itself is 19 and a half then you've got the camera the guide I have the guide scope camera and everything else and I just had to put it on dark so now I use a finder guide up there <laughs> An ASI 120mm. Um, I've had this camera a good few years now, but uh, it's been right, it guides well, so I use it. The imaging camera I bought from Kenyon Heath last year uh, for it's a 269C Altair Astro. It took me a while to figure it out. Nina's, I don't know, sometimes doesn't like it. It's, won't start so I can't just start a sequence I have to I have to do a, like a longish sub sometimes just sort of wake it up put it in you know, wake it up for some reason I don't know why 
it's just the way it is. So I have to do that first, then I'll do a focus and well, I'll shoot to a target in the frame and assistant, do a focus, and then I'll just set up a sequence and press play because it's already on the target, you just have to sleep particularly much. It'll still play solve and then it'll start finish and then it'll start and away you go. So I have to do, I have to be a bit more hands-on with it, but other than that, it's fine. I mean I can still be up and running 10, 15, 20 minutes. So a lot quicker than I used to be at the start. I used to find it frustrating you'd be sort of using the handset and that one wasn't it was never accurate. No matter how, how good you've done the star line, it was never accurate. You still had to tap it around, tap it around to get it how you wanted to take it up some exposure. Not, not quite there, so you move it up a bit and cause an extra amount amount up, up and it probably means left. <laughs> so you'd be all over the place. Like, uh. So anyway. Now I've got I say now figure out Lena. Love it. Love the program. Lena and Asta absolutely love it. You can just go click, 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 away you go. So yeah, I've, I know I'm still hands on with it, but I'm, I don't mind that. It's still quicker than messing around, looking through the finder and everything else, and using the handset. I mean, I've tried it through cast to sell, using it as fluid to a target via that, but that was never accurate either. So, you still had to find a star to line up on, you had to get that in, and you know, you're still messing around trying to go left, right, and find it, you know. And that system too, too fiddly as well. But now Nina, it's just an absolute, absolute game changer. So very happy with that. There's the focus cube on the bottom. Still need to sort him out. Uh, I should look into that. Obviously, there's the scope. I've got a pocket power box on the top. It's just stuck on with Velcro. It's absolutely fine like that. You've got the temp sensor, you've got the uh, sensor. You've, underneath the dew shield, there is a um, dew band. The camera could do the dew band, so I'm going to look into a way of keeping the dew off the sensor because I've had it dew up a couple of times now. Obviously, as we find a guy with an old trusty mount, I've had this a few years 2015, I bought this. Um, it's like the Mark 1 version, I guess, if you could call it a Mark 1. It doesn't have the USB to connect to the PC, which I don't know why it took Skywatch so long to incorporate one, but it just seemed like a, a, such a simple and straightforward thing to do. But anyway, there's that. Uh, on my pair with an extension, because I needed it high. And the mini PC I would connect to remotely. Um, all the software, capturing software. Just bolt it onto the side of the pier. Uh, you know, it works well. It works very well. I'm very happy with it. But I do love this scope. <laughs> really, really do love this scope. Anyway, I want to shut the dome up, put everything away, and go to bed. Hey everyone, well I thought I would come out tonight and take some photos from the Octavius Clouds. I think hopefully you can see them behind me. It's not the best display but we've got some cameras shooting so we'll see what we get. And if you can hear a rattly dees in the background, it's some guy in a taxi cab watching the TV. There you go. Takes all sorts I suppose. 